Welcome back to In Business. No company received more bailout money than AIG. The insurance firm got $182 billion in taxpayer funds, the biggest chunk of TARP money so far, by far. Now AIG is getting closer to paying it back. Joining us now is Treasury's acting head of TARP, Tim Massad. Tim, I know you're constrained because of securities law to the degree to which you can talk about AIG, but within that comfort zone, I, I do want to ask you, um, how comfortable are you with the succession plan that appears to be in place at AIG. Uh, Bob and Moshe will hand things over to Steve Miller should his health become a problem. But beyond that, is there a succession plan? Yes, I think the company has been very focused on this and uh, Bob Ben Moshe has also been very uh, uh, forthright in his comments on this. So they do have a succession plan in place. And I think the critical thing is uh, we've made enormous strides in getting to this point. We're now at the point where um, AIG uh, will repay uh, the government uh, all the money that it received. And uh, we, even at today's prices, would, would make a profit. That's uh, really an incredible uh, turnaround from where we were uh, almost two and a half years ago. Uh, how much of a profit do you expect the taxpayer to, to make off of AIG? Well, that depends on the market price over time, and I'm not going to speculate on that. Uh, but my job right now is to get back every single dollar that the taxpayer invested, and that's what we intend to do, and we're optimistic that we will do that and potentially make a profit uh, over the next couple of years. Well, we do now know the bankers who will be helping AIG to, to come back to the markets. How did you select or, or play into the process of selecting those four banks? Margaret, um, as you mentioned at the outset under the securities laws, I can't comment on the offering process. Let me just say that uh, with the recapitalization transaction that occurred last week, what happened was that AIG repaid the Federal Reserve credit facility. They repaid the Federal Reserve about $50 billion, and Treasury now owns 92% uh, of the common stock we have an investment of about 70 billion. So in order to exit this company, we will need to sell that common stock. And because of the size of that, mm -hmm. we will engage in uh, some offerings in the future. We will be, uh, have more to say about that as we can, uh, as permitted by the securities laws in the near future. And that'll take one to two years or so? Well, I would, I would not want to put a fixed timetable on it. It certainly won't be done uh, this year. Uh, we are hopeful that uh, over the next two years we can recover uh, quite a bit of that, uh, potentially all of it. It, it just depends on, on market conditions. Okay. Um, well, if City has already repaid its TARP funds, but That's Treasury right. still holds warrants on, what is it, 465 million of the bank shares. Do, do you expect to, to see them? Uh, come to market before February? Yes. Well, we have announced that we will be selling those warrants. Our normal procedure is that once a company has repaid in full, we then sell the warrants that we acquired. In the case of Citi, that's another uh, really terrific story in terms of the success of the TARP program. We invested a total of $45 billion. All of that has been recovered, and we made a $12 billion profit. So again, I think the lesson here is that this program was understandably unpopular and controversial. No one likes to use taxpayer dollars to rescue financial institutions. But the fact is it was successful. It will cost very little money in the long run. And we actually now are making a profit on many of the investments. Uh, some of the smaller recipients, uh, the smaller banks out there who received uh, emergency funding, are still experiencing difficulty uh, staying open for business. So Wall Street Journal had a report saying uh, as many as 100 banks who had taken TARP funds are still on the verge of failure. Do you believe those estimates? I mean, what's the reality of the help? Well, you know. Keep in mind that under this program, we were required by law to provide money to banks regardless of size. And we wanted to provide money to small banks because of their importance to so many communities. So many small businesses and consumers depend on small banks. So we have investments in uh, roughly 500 or so fairly small banks. 
those banks don't have access to the capital markets the way that the larger banks do. So it will take them more time, in many cases, to repay the government. Some of them are facing difficulty. But we've had very few failures and, and probably a much lower failure rate uh, within the TARP program than overall. This has been a very tough financial crisis uh, for everyone, uh, including many of the small banks. So we're continuing to work with them. We're optimistic that we will recover those funds, but it will take a little bit longer. Uh, we have to leave it here, but very quickly, how much of your time do you expect to be spending on Capitol Hill as uh, uh, we understand there will be hearings underway looking into the TARP process? As much time as they ask of me. Uh, this program was subject to a lot of oversight, and that is how it should be. It was a, originally a $700 billion program, and it's important that uh, Congress exercise oversight over that, so we're happy to have that. We think as people understand more about what actually happened and, and what the program has accomplished, uh, the story is a very good one. All right, Tim, thank you very much. Tim Massett, thank head you, of the TARP Oversight Program.